Hello and thank you for taking the time to attend this training on how to best support children and young people who stammer. I am Mara Janssen and I am a speech and language therapist at Bromley Healthcare. This training should take around 35 to 40 minutes to complete. We hope you enjoy the training and find it useful. Contact details for the service will be provided to you at the end of the training in case you have any queries. We are going to cover what your expectations and objectives are for this training, move on to a Mythbuster questionnaire surrounding myths and facts about stammering, then we will talk about what stammering is and what difficulties young people who stammer experience on a daily basis. After this we will discuss how we can help, the role of the speech and language therapist and setting a goal together at the end in order for you to actively implement some of the advice from this training. Now we will move on to the Mythbuster questionnaire. Please have a pen and paper ready for this exercise. We are going to try and bust some myths through a true and false questionnaire. Please write down what myths are true and what myths are false. You may be surprised at what you know or don't know. First, Rowan Atkinson stammers. What do we think? It's true. And so does or did King George VI, Emily Blunt, Julia Roberts, Winston Churchill, Marilyn Monroe, to just name a few. More boys than girls stammer. Is this true or false? It's true. Generally, more boys than girls experience speech and language difficulties, and that is also the case with stammering. Four out of five young people who stammer are male. Stammer and stutter mean the same thing. True or false? It's true. We tend to use stammer in this country, in the United Kingdom. Americans and Australians use the terminology of stutter, but they do mean the same thing. Stammering in young people is caused by their parents. Is this true or false? This is very false. This is never the case, though parents do often blame themselves. This shows the importance of us supporting not only the young person, but also the family. Stammering usually starts between the ages of two and five years old. Is this true or false? It's true. At the average age of onset, so the start of the stammer, is around two years, 10 months. And this can coincide with children going through a language development spurt. The best way to help a young person is to say stop, take a deep breath and start again. Is this true or false? This is false. This doesn't usually help. In fact, people who stammer rarely like others telling them what to do and how to speak. I will go into a bit more detail later in what we can say when someone stammers. Young people who stammer generally have poor language skills. Is this true or false? This is false. This can be the case, but it can also be the opposite, where they have better than average skills, causing a temporary imbalance between capacity and demand. They have so much they would like to say, they push their speech system to the point where it overloads. You should let young people who stammer opt out of talking activities in class. This is false. Though you shouldn't force them to talk, you should encourage them to join in gradually. You are, after all, preparing them for the outside world, where it will be difficult for them to opt out of talking. We will talk more about how to let them join in gradually later on in the training. There is no link between stammering and intelligence. True or false? It is true. It can affect anyone, but some people do judge others on how well they talk and think there is a link between the two. It is important for us to bust this myth. 1% of the adult population stammers. 
Is this true or false? This is true. 20% of all young children have a period where they stammer. 5% of these, 20%, continue to stammer for longer than six months. 1% of these, their stammer will persist into adulthood. It has to be noted that you may not know an adult is a stammerer if they're successfully managing their stammer. It is important to let our young people know and feel that they can keep going and aspire to be who they want to be irrespective of their stammer. One way you can do this is show them that there are famous people who stammer and let them know it didn't stop them from becoming who they wanted to become. We will give you a moment to read their anecdotes. So what is stammering? I would like you to take a moment to think about what you hear when someone stammers. The four main stammers are part word repetitions. So for example, I w -w -w went swimming today. Whole word repetitions, for example, but, 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 I want that one. Prolongations, which is where a sound is stretched out. For example, I went swimming. And blocks, which is where the tension builds up so much in the speech system, no sound comes out. We call these the core behaviours of a stammer. What do you see when someone stammers? Take a moment to note down things you see someone do when they stammer. We call these secondary behaviours. Any body movements that help them get started or get out of a word once they've already started stammering. For example, blinking, moving their head or body, stamping their feet, hiding their stammer by turning away their head or putting their hand in front of their mouth. The core and secondary behaviours can lead into something called safety behaviours. These can also be called word avoidance, delaying tactics, situation avoidance, and starters. Word avoidance is avoiding particular words by using other words or changing their sentences. Situation avoidance is avoiding particular situations by pretending to not know the answer, pretending to be thinking, saying as little as possible, finding ways to have other people talk for them, not putting themselves forward to do things they would otherwise always do, or getting out of situations that make them worried. Delaying tactics. This is where they're trying to not stammer, so they pause before a difficult word or repeat a word or sentence over and over before trying the word they expect to stammer on. Or starters. When they say a sound or word quickly, just before a difficult word. For example, um, would you like to go to a movie? Stammering may also be called disfluency. We may use the term fluent and disfluent throughout this training to describe smooth speech and stammered speech. This is a child's own depiction of her stammer. Take a moment to see the detail she has added in the picture to show what her stammer does to her. The pressure put on her lungs, the fire in her throat, the flushed cheeks and the dragon standing behind her as if he's always there ready to scare her. 
When we support a stammer in therapy, we make sure we address all the areas a stammer impacts a young person. What we hear, what we see, and what they feel underneath it all. This can be depicted well with an iceberg. Above the water is what we can hear and see. These are the repetitions, the blocks, the prolongations, as well as the secondary behaviours. Below the water is what they feel about their stammer, which is something we do not tend to see as much, but is just as important when support is given to the young person. They can feel a range of negative emotions, such as frustration, shame and fear. This then automatically triggers negative thoughts, such as they'll look down on me or they won't take me seriously. These then lead into the safety behaviours we talked about earlier to try and hide as much of their stammer as possible. Please have a look at the multifactorial model from the Michael Palin Centre for Stammering here in London in the UK, which explains some of the reasons why a young person may stammer. Stammering happens when multiple factors occur at the same time. Physical and speech and language factors trigger off the stammer, whereas emotional and environmental factors keep the stammer going. It is important to understand that we do not know what causes stammering exactly, but these are the areas that have been mostly linked within stammering research. Here is a video from the Michael Palin Centre of Stammering of what stammering is and feels like from a young person's point of view. Please take a moment to think and note down how a difficulty like stammering is affecting the young person. Please consider their confidence, self-esteem, friendships and academic performance. In general, they find talking to unfamiliar people and talking on the phone difficult, as the social interaction is more unpredictable and you can't observe any social and body cues from the other person whilst talking on the phone. The stammer tends to be worse when you are tired, anxious, worried, stressed, excited, put on the spot, under pressure, unwell or upset. It has a significant impact on people's well-being. They worry about situations, trying to avoid certain situations, and they lose confidence and lack self-esteem. In class, the task many young people who stammer know to be difficult is answering the register, answering questions in front of class, oral presentations, reading out loud, classroom discussions, and oral exams. They further talk about others mimicking their stammer or laughing at them when they get stuck. It is important to ensure the anti-bullying policy in your setting is implemented and taken seriously in order to support our young people in this area as much as we can. It can have a significant impact on their learning as well. They can contribute less in class, they can be so worried that it affects their ability to learn, and they can fail certain assessments like oral presentations or exams if they haven't been given extra time. How can we help? It is important to get to know what the child wants out of their support. Involve them in your goal setting, because if the goal is led by the young person, they will be much more motivated to participate. Find out what is motivating to them and see how the stammer may impact that. That could be your goal to work on and work towards together as a team. If the child is too young to do this, make sure to observe them and see where the stammer really impacts. This would be your first goal to work towards. There is a conspiracy of silence with stammering. If we don't talk about it, we are not making a big deal out of it and the child does not feel embarrassed. Actually, advice is to make sure to be open about the stammer. The young person may be very aware of what is happening with them. Therefore, those not talking about it and brushing it under the carpet will make them feel there is something wrong and they can't talk about it with anyone. The way you can bring it out in the open is to acknowledge when they have stammered in a relaxed manner and then move on gently to ensure they don't feel like it is a big deal. 
You could say, ah, you got a bit stuck there, but you got there in the end. Brilliant. Well done you. If the young person is slightly older, you can create a safe space where you can ask them about their stammer. Remember, they are the expert on their stammer and will know what is helpful and not helpful. Building confidence is key to supporting someone who stammers. You can do this by providing praise that is specific and has weight to it. What I mean by that is to try and avoid giving more vague praise like good boy or good girl. Instead, you tell them what they've done right and attach a positive attribute to it. For example, you helped me tidy up. That is so kind of you. Or you worked really hard there. I am proud of you. Another way to build their confidence is to show them that there are positive things that happen in their day. You can ask them to keep a good news diary where they write one piece of good news per day and share this with you. Earlier, we discussed that asking them to stop, take a breath and start again is actually not that useful. Instead, what you can do is maintain eye contact for reassurance and give them gentle nonverbal cues, such as head nodding, to showcase that you won't rush them or finish their sentences and that you will actively listen to what they have to say. This calm interaction will make them feel calm and in turn calm down their stammer. Young people who stammer can talk at a fast pace, but asking them to slow down is not the key to getting them to slow down. This is because slowing down your own rate of speech is a very abstract concept and thing to do. They may be able to slow down a little when you ask them initially, but they won't be able to maintain it. Instead, slow down your own talking and make the interaction calm. They can then match their body language and rate of speech to yours. Ensuring turn-taking within conversation and games between peers and adults. Turn-taking is a very important skill. Young people who stammer can find it difficult to turn-take or are worried they will be interrupted if they don't get their message across smoothly and quickly. This can make them talk at a faster pace to ensure they get it all out as quick as possible so they won't stammer or no one will interrupt them. Unfortunately, this will have the opposite effect and the worry and fast pace of talking will increase the stammer. Teaching turn-taking within conversation and games is important at school and at home, especially if the young person lives a fast pace of life at home and or has many siblings where turn-taking could become less of a priority. Ensure to model a safe environment to the child where mistakes are able to happen and they have positive models of how to deal with these mistakes. Young people who stammer can be sensitive in nature and worry if something doesn't happen perfectly, which will create an emotional imbalance which could lead to the stammer increasing. Therefore, modelling acknowledging the mistakes and how you reflect and handle the mistake in a positive manner will help guide them to do the same when it happens to them. Earlier in the training, I mentioned there would be alternative ways young people can join in with oral activities in class and be gently guided towards becoming more confident in speaking in front of class. In terms of answering the register, maybe perhaps they could put their hand up, answering questions, discussing with them prior to class if they want to volunteer for an answer or are happy to be chosen to answer, oral presentations, perhaps to a smaller group first and give lots of time and opportunity to practice. Reading out loud, perhaps you could try paired reading instead. Classroom discussions, maybe start off with pairs and then into small groups if possible. Oral exams, discuss with the school board if the young person is able to get extra time as they will need this to be able to get their message across in what is an already anxiety provoking situation. These are things young people want us to remember when supporting them and their stammer. Give us time to think and speak. Let us finish our sentence in our own time. Don't finish them for us. Stammering is not linked to intelligence. We are more than just our stammer. Listen to what we say rather than how we say it. Certain situations make us stammer more. Many of us find being put on the spot or feeling under pressure the hardest. 
The role of the speech and language therapist is to provide an assessment of the young person's communication skills as a whole and identify what type and severity of stammer they have. We provide intervention in the form of advice to everyone surrounding the young person, intervention sessions, onward referrals to specialist services like the Michael Palin Centre or City University. We advocate for the child when it comes to how they feel in class and if they're, they are vulnerable to teasing and bullying. We further train others in order to raise awareness of stammering, what it is and what we can do to help. It is important to note that speech and language therapy is an intervention, not a way of life. We are there to help you and the young person with a stammer when is needed, but won't be there in a continuous capacity. Those closest to the child require upskilling and support under the guidance and advice of a speech and language therapist. Now we've come to the part in the training where we're going to try and set some goals. May I ask you to think of one goal that you will implement after this training and write this down. Consider how you can put it in place. Does it require a discussion with a colleague and or a manager? What resources do you need to get or make to put it in place? Where will it be? When will it be? And for how long? And create a plan to implement the goal and review it to consider how effective it was. The Michael Palin Centre for Stammering and Stammer are brilliant support networks for young people who stammer and their families. Take a moment now to note down these details as they will be important for you to have a look at and also potentially advise when families come to you with initial concerns. They both have free helplines that you can call if you require immediate advice. Thank you so much for taking the time to attend this training. We hope it was useful and you feel more confident in helping and supporting young people who stammer. If you have any questions at all from this training, please don't hesitate to contact us on the details provided to you on the left-hand side of this slide. Thank you.